Hey, today I'm doing another one of my pack T tests, and I'm calling it the mysterious M855. You know, there's a lot of mystery surrounding this round, and uh, we're going to have a little bit of fun experimenting and learning about the M855. But just a little bit of background first. This round came out in the mid 1980s. Now when I served in the Army in the latter part, mid to latter part of the 1980s, I never saw the M855. In fact, the M855 was originally designed to be used in the squad automatic weapon. Well, I didn't see that either. It really didn't get fielded until after I got out. I was an M60 gunner shooting a 308 or 7.62 by 51. But let me not digress too much. The M855 was designed to effectively replace the um, M193 55 grain bullet with the 62 grain bullet. Uh, and one of the problems that they were seeing with the 193 55 grain was that it, it didn't penetrate even a pretty simple steel helmet after about 125, 150 yards or meters. So the M855 was developed. You know, the bullet itself is actually called SS109. When that 62 grain bullet, which has a steel cord near the tip, just um, in, behind a little bit of an air pocket, when that SS109 is loaded in that 5.56 ammo, it's called M855. Now, because it's longer, it has to be fired through a barrel with a little bit better, or a little bit faster, let me say, twist rate. So those 1 in 12, 1 in 10 twist barrels didn't perform very well with the 855 or SS109. Uh, that's when we started seeing the 1 in 7s and maybe some 1 in, one in 8s coming about. So um, I'm going to be shooting a full pack T test today with the M855. I'll be doing five round group at 100 yards off of the 18-inch uh, barrel 1 and 7 twist uh, IWI Tavor rifle. And then I'm going to be putting one round into bare ballistic gelatin, followed by another round into that same ballistic gelatin, but it's going to have to go through uh, some steel first, rather thick steel. Um, and we're going to see how well this works. Now, the concern that is starting to come up, or we've heard, maybe you've read about the 855, is that in some of these shorter barrels, the uh, M4 type barrels, that it loses the velocity, it starts off slower to begin with, and it loses velocity so fast that it then loses its metal penetration uh, and some of its good qualities that it had with that longer, originally 20 inch barrel. We're going to be using an 18 inch barrel, see what kind of velocities we're getting out of this. Now the other thing I should mention, and I almost made the mistake of saying it myself, uh, 855 is not armor piercing. It is designed to pierce steel, but that's not the same as armor. Armor piercing means it's designed to defeat armor plates that a person might be wearing or up armored, uh, lightly up armored vehicles. 855 is not armor piercing um, at all. So let me set the record straight that way and remove that little bit of a mystery. You know, there's also various different types of M855 out there on the market. The one that's actually being used by the military is something just like this. This is Lake City M855. This is one, uh, what I am going to be using for this test, and specifically in the ballistic gelatin test. But there's also M855 penetrators. This is Winchester uh, ammo. And there's also PMC X-Tac. This is made in South Korea. Another 62 grain green tip M855. Uh, it is posted here, advertised to have a muzzle velocity of 2,920 feet per second. We're going to be running the chronograph to see what kind of velocities we actually do get out of this ammo. So I think that sets the stage pretty well. Full pack T test, that's precision, accuracy, and consistency. 
five shot groups off of the bench followed by the terminal ballistic testing into the ballistic gelatin. Seven yards is what I'm going to be firing at for the ballistic gelatin test, 20% NATO block. Let's go ahead and get started. Bullseye in the upper left. This is the Lake City M855. Next up, I'll shoot the um, PMC XTAC ammo, the bullseye in the upper right, and then the lower uh, bullseye will be used for the Winchester M855. That's five of the PMC XAC. Last five, Winchester M855. Clear. Well, this is actually a mystery. I hit this a little bit low. Actually, it came in just on the bottom, which is fine. Uh, actually, not ideal, but it's fine. Traveled here and ended up, look at this, right there. That is part of the bullet. Looks like the tip, I'll get it all torn out. We'll see if we can get some more pulled out of here somewhere. But for the life of me, I can't see where this bullet went to. Well, let's go over the results that we saw out at the range. Uh, let's start off, same order, let's talk about the pack part of the test, precision, accuracy, and consistency. Now, consistency, by the way, comes from the lab radar chronograph. I'm taking the standard deviation of the muzzle velocities and that becomes our consistency uh, measurement. So we first fired that Lake City brass and uh, you know that target, well it looks like this, got one dead in the bullseye in the 10 ring in the X, ended up scoring 42 points of course with that one in the X and it had a muzzle velocity of 2,977 feet per second. And the extreme spread of this group was just about 3 MOA, 2.98 MOA. Now what's interesting is when we compare this with the Winchester, which we're going to do in just a little bit. So I'll set this aside. 
for the time being. The second group that I fired was the PMC XTAC Green Tip Penetrators M855. And this one gave us a four MOA group. It actually shot, it actually shot a little bit lower than the Lake City uh, brass did. Uh, pretty similar muzzle velocities, 2,933 feet per second being the average. It ended up scoring in an accuracy sense, 34 points with zero in the X. Winchester ended up giving us almost identical extreme spread, 2.98 MOA, really identical. Uh, didn't score quite as well in the accuracy sense, nothing in the dead bullseye, but still 41 points but zero in the X. Now that's interesting because it's almost identical to the Lake City and uh, fairly different though than the PMC. But in a general sense, all of these M855s shot, you know, pretty comparably. Next, let, let's look at the ballistic gelatin part of the test, the terminal performance, the T part of PAC-T. And uh, you know, when I first got out there and I took that, that gel block number four out of its box, um, I looked at it and said, oh, geez, this has got um, more shots and kind of that residue, uh, carbon residue, whatever, inside the gel block than I recalled from the last time. Didn't look like it's in too good a shape. And that gel block now, by the way, is uh, going to be remelted before I use it once again. But uh, the first shot was bare ballistic gelatin. Just put that bullet into it, and let's see what it does, bare ballistic gelatin. As it turns out, the fact that there was some other shots and kind of um, residues and so on and so forth in that block really didn't matter too much because that M855 bullet not only fragments, it almost disintegrates. I mean, it really, really fragments. And that first shot, by the way, I don't know if you saw my little note, but I looked at all the different shots in that gel block and I figured if I could put my shots a little bit below the center point, uh, that would give it the best chance of passing through more or less undisturbed gel material. Uh, and I did. I, I ended up shooting, uh, hitting that thing pretty much where I wanted. The second round was a little bit, little bit lower than I really wanted, but nonetheless, it did pretty well. And those rounds just fragmented. Those bullets absolutely fragmented inside the, uh, the gel block. And that first one, I don't even know how far we could say the penetration was because we really didn't recover anything that was measurable. The next shot I put into that, um, that bullet first had to pass through 18 gauge sheet metal. This thing right here. This is what it had to pass through and the bullet entered from here and then passed through obviously on this side and I purposely left a, just a little bit of a distance between this um, metal and the gel block itself and then we saw that um, bullet uh, move into the gel block. It obviously is tumbling because whenever a bullet takes uh, a path like this or like this inside the gel block, we know it is tumbling. And uh, that bullet did that. We had that nice little piece, little piece left, and this is it here. This is it. It's just like the nose cap is all we have left of that bullet. I don't know why it separated so cleanly, really. Um, it probably was that cap just in front of the steel core itself where that air pocket would be sitting. I don't, I don't know also why we don't have any green residue showing whatsoever. It, it's gone at this point. So maybe this was another piece inside. I don't know exactly what happened. But again, uh, from seven yards, kind of a, a personal defense, home defense situation, distance, that bullet really, really fragments, disintegrates. And uh, let's talk a little bit about that. 
You know, normally we like to see a bullet that enters into the gel block. It mushrooms very nicely, travels in a straight path, penetrates 11, 12 inches, somewhere in that range is, is just wonderful, 14 inches, whatever, uh, produces a very powerful, what we call a transient cavitation channel, very abrupt energy burst inside that target. That looks like a very good um, lethal bullet. Now the M855 is also considered very lethal, but it's, it's considered lethal for other reasons than those kind of traditional uh, reasons. Meaning, in other words, large frontal area, uh, the mushroom, the spinning of that bullet, almost like a circular saw going uh, through that target, etc., etc. Let me go back to this. Um, this steel plate here, uh, sheet metal, it certainly looks like this bullet started shedding its, its jacket on the outside here. We'll get a nice close-up of this as you're looking at right now. But um, I'm sure that that is parts of the jacket of the bullet and not part of this sheet metal. You probably also noticed in both the bare ballistic gelatin and uh, the gel block where we had the steel first uh, that there were, there were fragments flying out. In fact, I tried to point those out in some of those slow motion freeze frame uh, events that yeah, there's stuff flying all over the place here and helping you kind of catch that. We have stuff dropping out the bottom, stuff ejecting uh, out the top of the gel block. and. Uh, yeah, it, it was wild, and that's sort of that mystery again of the M855. Um, very, very different bullet than what we're accustomed to uh, in the hunting world. Uh, and, and so saying that it's, it's a bad bullet, it's a good bullet or anything like that is very, very difficult to do. When we look at the overall score and the final uh, numbers for this bullet, we had a 62 grain bullet to begin with. We fired it. Uh, into the gel block at seven yards. Again, we're at just under 3,000 feet per second. I don't know if I noted that earlier, but the uh, Winchester uh, M855 had an average muzzle velocity fairly over 3,000 feet per second, so that was interesting. But back to this one, the maximum penetration that we had, or the place where I recovered this little tip right here was at 13 inches. Of course, it made a little bit of a different uh, path of travel, so it actually moved or traveled further than 13 inches. Um, but we only had 7.2 grains. You know, just in your head, that's just over 10%. Uh, and so when we look at, again, measuring against our kind of traditional rubric, this bullet did not score well whatsoever. Uh, so now if we think about that a little bit, how would this round be for self-defense? Personal defense situation, let's say, in the home. It did not overpenetrate. penetrate uh, We had a massive fragmentation, disintegration type of effect. So that is a plus for that sort of scenario, personal defense scenario. The thing is that there seems to be, to me, there seems to be some better bullets out there. Uh, again, I'll, I'll call back to the, uh, reckon back to the Barnes 62 grain TTSX. What a wonderful bullet. Very, very strong uh, transient cavitation channel. Um, scored well, good weight retention, but a person could argue that it overpenetrated. Now, if, there's a lot of talk also that that there's too much emphasis being placed on over-penetration. Um, so take that with a grain of salt, take it for what it's worth, consider it certainly. So that is the M855. We shot three different bullets today. One of them, the Lake City, we popped it into the ballistic gelatin, did a little bit of testing on that. And that's the results. Thanks a bunch for watching. We've got some more pack t tests coming up, looking at some more 9mm and 45 bullets.